from 32 down to two. Weird games, NFC game. Weird. I had people watching an NFC game yesterday uh, that never watched football, and they're like, this is what you do for a living? This is, well, how do you do this every day? I'm bored, I don't like what's going on here. We'll dig into that, and then we gotta get to the AFC side of things. X Factor, Human Joystick, Dante Hall is on the show. The perfect person to have after the Sky Moore thing. Uh, last time we saw Dante Moore, he was coming in straight from a Kendrick Lamar concert in LA the night before, and Today, he is joining us bright and early on the West Coast from being at Arrowhead last night, popping bottles of champagne from a suite or something, so that's very exciting. Uh, and then we have, I mean, Marissa's hilarious. We're here with another green screen as our studio is getting rebuilt. Can you come over here? She wore an Eagle shirt. Anybody ever take a production class? Look at the, oh, yeah, she's missing. Fly, give it, give it to me, give it to me, Marissa. Oh, show starts now. Awkward. I like that. What was more awkward, that than Marissa behind me on a green screen trying to do this? Marissa, nobody in the control room thought that you weren't going to be singing. I thought you'd be singing. Sing, sing from, from your gut. Fly, eagles, fly. The whole thing. No, just something. No, oh. she just, hey, eagles, fly. No, no, no. Uh, Jalen, much more comfortable on the field than he was singing that song. We'll get to all of that. We've got Brandon Marshall on the show, people. We're excited to break down some of this. And yeah, we're going to get to the officiating because a lot of it was sus yesterday, and we didn't like it, so Bengals fans, I got you covered, but the uh, important thing here is that the Heinz Ketchup Super Bowl, the Super Bowl 57, has been set. Kansas City Chiefs taking on Marissa's Philadelphia Eagles in the desert in Arizona. Ooh. Brandon Marshall, by the way, joining our show, he picked the Eagles to go all the way. I think we first had him on uh, the first couple of weeks of the season, and this game will take place less than two weeks from today. So we're going to chew on it. We're going to spit it out, pick it up, put it back in our mouth, swish it around, chew it back out again, because that is how much time we have to break down these games. And I don't care much for the Pro Bowl. So we're going to talk about this and a lot of the twists and turns uh, as it happened yesterday. So, uh... I stayed up all night watching these games, full disclosure. This is water, we're waiting for my coffees to arrive. So this is how I feel, and where we should start is in the game we saw last night in the AFC. This dramatic Chiefs win, bit of controversy, 23-20 to 20 over the Bengals. Their first win over the Bengals, the score now 3-1. to one. And I will get into some of these calls, the uh, thoughts about the referees, the officiating a little bit later, so do not worry, Bengals fans. But we got to, and we will, and we are excited to give the Chiefs some love. This is incredible what they accomplished last night. Bum ankle, Travis Kelsey back spasms, down every option to catch a ball that there is, a pesky mare giving everybody the cringes, and they still got it done. Patrick Mahomes, he was down, not one, not two, not three, four. He was down four of his top five receivers. Still manages to throw, oh, oh my God. This laser to Marquez Valdez-Scantling for a touchdown. MVS, have yourself a night. Uh, unbelievable performance, uh, performance of a lifetime. Uh, I was tweeting, I mean, I tweeted, that was my Twitter performance of a lifetime last night. I was on a plane watching this action. The Bengals were on defense, part of my Twitter tirade. Uh, I was loving it. They were stout against KC. DJ Reader was on our show the other week. I'm excited for what they were doing. They held the Chiefs to just about two yards per carry. So what does that mean? It was all on Mahomes. It was all on Patrick. Patrick Mahomes on a bum ankle to deliver. And he did that even though he was dealing with um, something that saw him limping out on the field. It was still an issue. He battled through it, and he just kept doing it. He kept making plays. It was crazy. And I tried to warn you people. I tried to warn you Bengals fans. Chris Jones had a little something extra for this. He never had a sack in a playoff performance. He had about 15 or 14 of those outings. Sackless. Almost got his hands on Burrow twice. Barely. He couldn't get his hands on him so they could advance to the Super Bowl last year. He has another shot. This was amazing. He, not, he doesn't ding him once. He takes him down twice, okay? 14th playoff game for that. He hit Joe Burrow. He was all over Burrow the whole time, man. He hit him another five times as well in this one. So, I mean, he talked about making up for past opportunities 
and stuff in the AFC title game last year, and he responds with the game of his life, saying, by the way, to James Palmer, Jimmy Palmtrees over at NFL Media after the game, don't disrespect Arrowhead. Do not disrespect Arrowhead. That was the theme after the game, of course, which it's not even called Arrowhead anymore. Isn't it G-E-H-A Stadium? At, at this point, stadium? Is that what they're calling it? Imagine what an L that is for them <laughs> with all of this Burrowhead, Arrowhead nonsense. They can't even get the game, the name and the branding right. But this Chiefs team was right. And, and they won and they made plays when it counted. And their quarterback was out of his mind. And uh, he was on another level. And I didn't, I'll be totally honest, and we're going to get into the Bengal side of this and you got a lot to gripe about. And today's an emotional day, I want to remind everyone. Feel free to just... Set scorch earth on everybody. All the officials, all be mad at the NFL, be mad at everybody, be mad at, you know, well, we'll talk about being mad at 58, and Brandon Marshall has some thoughts on that coming up. But I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with what I was seeing at the end of last week from the fans with the Bengals and the mayor and all of that stuff um, that was going on. It, it you know, I, I texted Hamilton at Friday night after this whole mayor fiasco went down and I just said, I do not like this Bengals vibe of dominance. Like, we're, we're better 3-0, and blah, blah. Chiefs are pissed, gotta be. And he said, it's not them, don't change on us. And I don't think the Bengals fans are changing. I think there's obviously a lot of pent up stuff going on with the NFL's rules changing on the fly to not give them you know, all the benefits of all of the rules they decided to change um, in, in the shadow, in the aftermath of what happened with DeMar Hamlin, who was healthy and recovering, and, and we love to see all of that. I think they felt like they got a raw deal. I agree that they did get a raw deal, and I think um, there was a lot of bravado going into this game, but the Burrowhead stuff, um, you know, the Hilton stuff of it all, this was not the vibe going into the Super Bowl or this AFC Championship game last year, and I didn't I didn't love it, um, but I did think to myself, and I even wrote this to Hamilton later that night, I don't, it's okay. They're still going to be fine because they have Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor. And Joe Burrow's not all of a sudden feeling himself smoking cigars before games are even played. He's not affected. The team isn't going to overshoot this. Um, and they didn't. They looked fine yesterday. It's just that it really clearly affected the Chiefs, okay? And I can't play this bite enough. I don't know that I've laughed so hard about a uh, NFL post game bite. I mean, I'm I'm crying about Travis Kelsey. Let's start with him with Mahomes after the game. <laughs> Woo! Burrow hit my ass. Woo! It's Mahomes' house. <laughs> There's the belly laugh. Just the be that is pent up. That's just you. I, you can love the Bengals. You can be. That is hilarious. That is hilarious to what's joyful. And then you have Kelsey, and he's up there with Jim, poor Jim Nance, who's trying to have you know have something go right, some nice and PG. And here he is. Hey, I got some wise words for that Cincinnati mayor. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. You gotta fight for your right to fight. Yeah, Jabroni. I was like, what is happening? Am I watching an AFC title game? Uh, or am I watching like WWE? What am I, I loved, I just loved it because to be honest, and man, I'm really sad for the Bengals and the Bengals fans are pissed today and they should be so angry. But it only, it, well, it shows a couple of things. Bulletin board material, anybody, Eric Weddle included, saying, it doesn't matter, you shouldn't be motivated. Every game is basically decided on the X factor, and we'll ask Dante Hall about this, of bulletin board material serving as motivation. It helped send those receipts back. It completely lifted the Bengals over the Bills in that game to get to this AFC Championship game. And then all this talking, it wasn't tons of talking, it was a couple, you know, a couple apples, and uh, <laughs> a couple talkative apples and a mayor that really did this but but I have to be honest like my it's my dream to do what Kelsey did it is my dream to have all these people against me don't go out and you know whatever whatever it might be and have me put up a performance and be able to back it up and get in front of the microphones of the world and belly laugh about being disrespected and you call like calling the place that I live and my quarterback who I love so much another name. And I, the media flew with that. That's not even the bit. The media completely flew with the Burrowhead thing and that happened. So yes, we will get into the penalties 
in a bit, but congrats to these chiefs. Uh, uh, congratulations to the city of Kansas City. The, is this a dynasty? Do they need a win for it to be a dynasty? I'll ask Dante Hall. They made plays. That's all I know for right now on this Monday celebrating this. Uh, and they they got themselves their trip to Arizona. Now let's get to the Eagles. <laughs> this guy, how, much, how much time do we spend on this? The Eagles are meeting the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Bizarre Bowl is sort of the word that I've come to terms with the, with the NFC championship tilt. 31 to 7, uneven. I, I don't even know. We had debates about punts hitting wires. There was a near brawl. I could not, be, I literally could not believe what I was seeing. Um, and the way this one completely turned on the Niners, sixth play from scrimmage, okay? And this is the guy that deserves all of our love, Hassan Reddick. Oh my, oh. and it was the whole time. I mean, this, this strip sack of Brock Purdy, this injures Purdy, he gets banged up on his elbow, and it looked like Brock was done until fourth string, string quarterback Josh Johnson got that concussion, right? He forces Brock to go back into the game, even though he couldn't really throw the ball. It was kind of a bummer seeing the Niners season come down to more injuries, the quarterback position. I would have loved to sort of see the teams face each other at full strength. That was a sentiment that I saw a lot on Twitter that, you know, I wish we could have seen both of these guys. But credit to the Eagles. You get the job done. You're the last man standing. You, uh, they left, they dominated. That's what they did. And Hassan Reddick, as you just saw, he sort of makes a statement here. Maybe he should have been under stronger consideration for Defensive Player of the Year. Granted, Chris Jones did his thing. I'm not saying he didn't, but to not even be named a finalist for the award, this man finished second in the NFL in sacks in the regular season. He completely outshined Nick Bosa yesterday with two sacks of the forced fumble on the Purdy play. Oh, Marissa's going, yes, yes. I mean, it's true. He was the one, Hassan Reddick, Recovered Josh Johnson's drop pass uh, as well. So he's been on fire during this entire postseason run. And if the Eagles finish and they lift that Lombardi, oh my gosh, can you imagine Kelsey and Kelsey? I can't even handle it. We'll be talking about Reddick's playoff performance. And I'm not even kidding. I, I will put it up there. I'll be the first to say it is up there with a 2015 Von Miller. You know, you want to talk how many Bears highlights I've been living off of as scraps for the past 30 years? Richard Dent, baby, 85 Bears. It and he have been that freaking good. And for the Eagles offense, do you feel good about it? You do. Okay, she's nervous. Okay, she's nervous, but she's not. You, you got this. We didn't. I don't know. I don't know how to feel today. Today's just reaction, emotion day, right? We didn't get to see Jalen Hurts at his best, right? He wasn't on top of his game. But they were able to keep pounding away at this Niners team that everyone said, you haven't faced a defense like us. Well, it was the number one ranked defense. And they coasted to a win. So Jalen keeps saying his shoulder isn't 100%. He's keeping it real with us. And he hasn't quite looked as sharp as he did earlier this season. But the, um, the Eagles haven't really had to lean on that arm yet. And maybe they won't, right? They haven't really had to do that in the playoffs. And they've been literally running over teams. Are, were you dying when you saw Boston Scott get in the end zone? I'm at, I'm at a, a Smirnoff event. Having, having, I was actually having a lot of fun. I was, I'm a Smirnoff spokesperson and partner, and I'm in Dallas for the day. And I, but when I see this Boston Scott thing, I'm losing my, I'm throwing coasters and things. I was losing my mind. I was so excited because he's a friend of the show, and he's a guy who's like, I just do my thing against the Giants, and I just want to make good plays when they happen. I want to be a guy who's just consistent and does what he's told. You crushed it. And, Phil, and Miles Sanders, you loved seeing all of it. Philly. Dominant win, and there's nothing to take away from this other than you advance to a Super Bowl, which is amazing. Um, but the shoulder is something I'm nervous about and something that I personally will be keeping a close eye on as we head towards the Super Bowl. Is two weeks enough time to heal a little bit? Will he regain his top form? These are all questions, but defense, offensive line, and God, this offensive line, Jordan Mailata, emotional after the game. These Eagles are going to be tough to stop. All right, I'm going to stop talking. I Hopefully my coffee is here. We've got so much to get to. I don't need coffee because we've got an electric former wide receiver for the Chiefs joining us. I bet he slept even less than I did. Dante, have you slept yet? Don't lie. You're, you're pulling another Kendrick Lamar. I know it. Do you have his Instagram? Do you have the Instagram with the champagne? Oh, I want the champagne Instagram as we look at Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. You probably had their fair share of champs 
last night after winning and host, hoisting that AFC championship trophy. Conrad's telling me we're live on air. I guess that's good to know as we welcome in our first guest who played wide receiver for nine seasons, seven of those for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's one of the baddest return specialists in the history of the NFL. Uh, they call him the human joystick, the X Factor. It never gets old with Dante. Ho! Good morning. How are you? I, listen, I'm good. Last time I saw you, you came crawling in from a Kendrick Lamar concert in LA on no sleep. And last night, I hope we have it, because I asked for it. I'm watching the video of you popping ball. Yes, in a suite at GEHA Field at Arrowhead. Talk to me about the vibes. I mean, honestly, the vibes were, I felt a lot of nervous energy because it felt like that game was setting up to be a repeat of last year. So a lot of nervous oh. energy throughout the stadium, but also obviously a lot of excitement. The defense played their tails off. Um, but definitely you can feel like everyone feeling like not again, especially when Patrick lost the, um, lost the ball. When I guess oh. it was attempting to make a pass. It was like deja vu all over again. So a lot of nervous energy, but a lot of fun in the end. So in the end, tell me about that energy. Was it just as exciting as a couple of years ago when they won and then went on to win the Super Bowl? Or do you feel, you know, give, give me that. Be honest, Hall, be honest. So I'll be, I'm always honest. Like, I'm going to keep it real with you no matter what. So the stadium was just as exciting, but I felt like once we got away from the stadium and went to go out to party, it was pretty dead. It was pretty dead in KC. So maybe Kansas City fans are so jaded or they're, so used to going to Super Bowls and winning the LFC championships, they don't celebrate the <laughs> LFC championships anymore. They only celebrate Super Bowl wins. So. Wow. Yeah. I got to talk to somebody on the Patriots. This is a, a dynasty in the making, if it's not already a dynasty. Like, did they get tired? Did Foxborough or New England ever get tired? They've made it to three of the last four. So going into this one, now they're going back. Uh, leading into this game, Dante, there was a lot of chatter. There's a lot. We got mayors talking. You had Travis Kelsey out there talking to Jim Nance. I was. I'm still crying from that. The whole Burrowhead thing. Let's. Let's. I want to play it again. Show me. Show me Kelsey with Nance. Please do. Hey, I got some wise words for that Cincinnati mayor. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. You gotta fight for your right to fight. I love it. Mean, what dude. do you think? Oh my God. <laughs> epic, epic. Um, and that's how you end all trash talk right there. That's the way you end trash talk. But leading up to the game, I thought it was amazing. Um, I like when guys are honest how they feel. Um, I like a little banter, a little trash talk. I think it makes for a better game. Um, but in the end, you got to go out and play and back it up. And the Bengals almost backed it up, but obviously the Patrick Mahomes led Chiefs and Travis Kelsey had the last word and I was if very Jim, grateful. If Jim Nance if Jim Nance handed you that microphone last night what would you have said to the mayor? Oh, it would have been safe on TV. I, <laughs> it would have been a bunch of <laughs> beep, beep, a couple of fines handed out. I mean, the disrespect when they started calling Arrowhead Burrowhead, that pissed me off. The rest of the chit chatter, that's great, but you can't call Arrowhead Burrowhead. That's just the ultimate disrespect. And I'm a big Joe Burrow fan. I think the guy's incredible. I've been a fan of his since LSU. Really like him other than when he's playing my Chiefs. But they took it a little too far. And um, I think I would have said yeah. something similar to what I said. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was it was Mike Hilton's name. And so it's, it's important to point out it wasn't Joe Burrow calling it Burrowhead. Joe Burrow would, you know, I don't think he would ever. It's just, a, you know, let's remove him to your point. What do you think went so wrong for the Bengals here? Oh, it was obviously going into that game, I felt like Joe Burrow and Patrick would do what they do. In big games like this, it's always the role players of the others. And um, mm. I just think that offensive line been weak. You got Chris Jones, Frank Clark. Those guys really feasted off of that um, porous offensive line. And I think that was the biggest difference. It's similar to what happened to the Chiefs a few years ago in the Super Bowl. You know, you got a lot of injuries throughout the offensive line. 
and you just can't give your star quarterback enough time to uh, do what he does. Um, but he still almost poured it out. But the difference in the game was definitely Chris Jones and that and that defense. Uh, and I mean, you're, it's very fitting that we have you. I'm glad that you weren't, you know, arrested in some, in some, you know, under the stadium for your expletives on the stage because we need you to go over this drive for the game-winning field goal set up by this insane 29-yard punt. Talk me through this, Sky. This is when it mattered, Dante. Exactly, and it was so cold. And as a return man, the best thing about playing during the winter time, you can't really boom these punts. So as soon as I'm sitting there, I'm watching, I'm thinking to myself, that is a return ball. Meaning you got time to catch it, survey the field, and make a play. And it was great to see this young rookie make a play in this moment because he has struggled this season in fielding punts and, and, and being uh, the return man that they thought he was able to be. So I think this will a, a be great for him as far as his confidence moving forward. But what a play because I don't believe the Chiefs would have had enough time to go down and get in field position without that key return. It's super true. He was an X factor, if you will, uh, in this game to get it done. But I mean, so were a lot of guys. Marquez Valdez Scantling, game of his life. You mentioned Chris Jones, game of his life. But even, you know, and it's sort of, I defend Patrick Mahomes a lot this year because I think we are not being respectful of greatness as it happens anymore because we are used to it. It is normal to say Patrick Mahomes is going to do this, this, and this. But last night, ankle injury, down four of his five wide receivers. What specifically impressed you about Mahomes the most? Just his grit. And I was it's funny you asked me that because I was just thinking about, I was watching the highlights this morning, watching a lot of, uh, of coverage of, and replays of the game. And what came to my mind was, he grew up in an area that I'm very familiar with. It's East Texas. And I started my young life there playing football. It's the first time I ever played football. It's the country. It's the backyards of Texas. Then I moved to Houston, and I started playing city ball. You know, Texas, Georgia, okay. Florida, Louisiana, all these great southern states that we know. It's the football Bible Belt. But it's something about those backyard country southern football players. They make you tough. It's a different form of football. And I'm just like, this is where this guy was bred. This is where he's born and raised. This is where he played backyard football. You have to be tough to come out of that type of atmosphere, that environment. It is not easy. And um, I was just like, you know, it makes sense that he went out and, and, and played a gritty game. I had high ankle springs. That's the injuries that took me pretty much out of my career. Yeah. I know what that feels like. So I'm super impressed with his, with his ability to go out and be able to play through that pain and zero degree weather. It makes it even worse. So salute to him and his toughness. Yeah, but I gotta tell you, you can't talk about Texas quarterbacks because you know who he's facing. Jalen Hurts, Houston native. In two weeks. So they're, you know, they're meeting together. It's the first meeting of two black quarterbacks in the Super Bowl as well. What are your initial thoughts? I know it's hard to put your head around all of it two weeks away, but two Texas boys, but they're both going to bring it, even if they're not 100%. Jalen with the shoulder, Mahomes with the ankle. Yeah, so initially someone showed me that meme that it was the first time two African quarterbacks would be facing off in the Super Bowl. Gave me the chills. I think it's amazing progress. Um, and these guys, two Texas guys, going to battle. Um, I'll, I'll be pulling for Jalen Hurts to do well, but obviously uh, rooting for my Chiefs to win. Um, I think in two weeks, the injuries will not heal. You, you can't, you know, heal in two weeks, but they'll definitely be feeling better. They have time to um, be at their optimal, um, be at their best. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing these guys face off. Um, they bring two totally different things to for their teams. It's going to be a fun matchup to watch. If I'm Jalen Hurts, I don't want none of 95. <laughs> I would agree. Chris 95, was, Chris, Chris was on, He was on another level. On it, He was crazy last night. He really was. And um, he had to be. In order to win that game, he had to be on that level. And I don't know whose idea it was on that critical third down last play of the game when Chris got that sack. But he switched from the D tackle position and went outside to the defensive end. I thought that spoke volumes of his ability to play inside, outside, a man of his size. 
that was very impressive. And I don't know if it was Spag's idea, defense line's coach idea, or if it was Chris Jones' idea, but when they switched him, it, it didn't allow the Bengals to just basically double-team him um, easily being at the D-tackle position. And I thought he played phenomenal, and I thought liberally that was an amazing adjustment at a pivotal point in that game. So Chris Jones it's, definitely deserves a lot of kudos for that win. It's really well said. It's probably why he's an all-pro. That versatility, a big part of why he's a defensive player of the year nominee. He looked a lot. I mean, Bosa for the Niners could not get it done. So, we're, you know, Chris Jones might be that guy. And Lane Johnson and Travis's brother, Jason, they're going to have their hands full in the Super Bowl. And, you know, the Chiefs are going back there. We keep talking. You're saying the crowd was a little like, oh, another Super Bowl. They're in that <laughs> dynasty conversation, Dante, are they there? In your eyes, do they need to win this Super Bowl against the Eagles to be considered a dynasty? I think so, yeah. To be a dynasty, you at least got to have three at a minimum. Back-to-back -back is cool, couple is good, but I think when you get three and more, that moves you into that dynasty uh, conversation. It's one thing to go, which is just as impressive, as we all know, it's difficult to make it to these uh, Super Bowls. I played nine years, never even won a playoff game. And these guys are mm. playing in the fourth Super Bowl, so um, a third Super Bowl in four years. So definitely, if you want to go to that next level and be in a dynasty, you got to win. You got to win. You got to win this one. I'll just say this: I know you you love the Chiefs side. I let you know. I I wanted the Bengals to win, so now I'm just rooting for both. I just want a great game, but it's you know it's very impressive. It's so hard to keep a team together, like Brett Veach has done. They obviously got rid of Tyreek Hill. They made that work, and that's a benefit. And Andy Reid and all the, you know, Mahomes has been there. Travis has been there. They're stable. On the Eagles side, it's damn impressive to me. You're talking new coach. You're talking new quarterback, new weapons, new all that. Howie Roseman is and Jeff Lurie really the only thing keeping any stability. They were able to completely retool and they're back in the Super Bowl. And that that might be just as impressive. I would agree with you wholeheartedly on that. And I think the biggest decision they made was giving Jalen Hurst the keys. He's a natural born leader. And you put these pieces around him and you get a leader like that. That's when your team takes off. So I agree wholeheartedly with everything you just said. Dante, do you need a nap? <laughs> I do, but I, I have a, a lot to do today. I need a nap. I can't <laughs> nap, but I need one. I'll catch up on sleep tomorrow. Okay, you catch up on sleep tomorrow. You're the best. Congratulations. Another run. Will I see you in Arizona? Absolutely. I was going anyway, but I'm glad my Chiefs will be joining me. Okay, they'll be joining you with the party during the Rihanna concert in the desert. Dante Hall, we appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. And maybe we'll see you out there in AZ. Get some sleep. We got Brandon Marshall coming in. Now let's really get into this thing. Officiating, Trent Williams, all the drama with Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall joining the show. Momentarily, the Bengals tweeting, we will be back. And I have all of the confidence in the world that that will be true. Today is an emotional day for Bengals fans. It was an emotional week leading up to this game, of course. I wanted them to win so badly, I literally tweet or texted my entire show staff as I was on a flight back from Dallas to LA. I'm going to get, I'm so gonna get escorted off this flight. They're gonna put the flight on the ground somewhere in near Arizona, ironically enough, and I just want the PR team to be ready with FanDuel, and I want Taylor to just get ready for the social onslaught because I am losing my mind in an exciting way. It was a really exciting game. It was a great game. Uh, I hate officiating talk more than anything. I try to avoid it at all costs. It sucks. It taints the game. It's never what I want to be talking about. It's never what we should be talking about, especially really any game on a measly Sunday in the early window, but the AFC Championship game, it's so weak. And there's a lot for Bengals fans to be upset about this morning and validly upset about, or at least like, what is that? Where's the consistency? There's the redo. Oh my God, the redo of the 39. Has anybody ever seen that before? Has anybody ever seen a second? No, Jamar Chase was tweeting about it. Then there's the intentional grounding when it looked like I'm sorry, when there was a receiver in the area. Then there's the late hit on Osai, which was a late hit, but also a call the Bengals didn't get on the previous drive when Frank Clark, Frank Clark of all people, hits Burrow well after he releases the ball. So these things, 
the, the reason why Bengals fans are so pissed is because that call wasn't made on the other drive. And there's distrust already with this Bengals team that already thinks that the NFL changed rules on the fly and the rule book to benefit every other AFC contender, including the Ravens, but them. Again, all of the consequences, none of the benefits like the rest of the AFC felt. And that's why you had Burrow a little salty after that win against Buffalo saying, send them refunds. They didn't like that. That was not fair. You had Mrs. Blackburn saying, I'm not even going to vote for this because I want it to be more fair. And I want the right thing to happen and it didn't. So that's all conflated. That is all some stuff that they take with them um, in this world. They don't have control, these Bengals players, but what the mayor said, the Burrowhead thing, it obviously is something that's going to fly. It affected the Chiefs players. I do think it elevated the Chiefs players. I think every player out there, you can say what you want. They all want to win, but they all have their own personal motivation, too. You sat with Chris Jones. Chris Jones wants to win, but Chris Jones is an all-pro bona fide guy. He doesn't, what does he have in this? He had a thing with Burrow from the last time, so a score to settle, a little something extra. All of these players come on our show and talk about these plays that keep them up at night and haunt them and these situations that that help, help motivate them. Uh, and that's what this looked like last night. And you have every right, Bengals fans, older fans, newer fans to bandwagon that are a little bit more chirpy. That's what I've noticed. Today is for that. Today is for emotions. Today is for torched earth, like scor torched earth, scorched earth, whatever you want to do, torch it, scorch it, get rid of it. Uh, it's my opinion that there were some questionable things happening out there that were inconsistent, if anything. And what that tells me, and what I think I can say, is it's an indication that there is a concern league-wide with officiating that at some point needs to be addressed. As I was watching this unfold and hearing the Bengals fans, it took me back to week one of our show. Sean Payton joins me, sits out of nowhere, and he starts bringing up concerns that he has about officiating, improvements he wants to happen. He was on the competition committee. He said that he dislikes the all-star crews in the playoffs. Let me stop there. All-star crews, of course, you get these, hold on, you get these officiating crews that are put together for the first time. The best of the games, they get graded, they get chosen to work together. You know, it, it's a chemistry issue at that point. So Sean Payton brought this up early, off the jump, unprompted. So he said that he wants the same crews that they use in the regular season. Like, And you think about a guy like Sean Payton, he's watching this last night, Nicole Roby Coleman, I mean, hello. He blamed that, or he put that on a young official deferring to an older official that he's, the chemistry might not be there. So I couldn't help but think about that and that conversation that I had on the show with Sean Payton watching this sort of all go down last night, you know, watching these calls, these decisions that were totally unprecedented. So it's hard enough to beat Mahomes and this Kansas City team. It is it's impossible. You aren't able to do it when the calls aren't going your way. So it, today's a day for being mad, for feeling your feelings, for letting it out, for treating the NFL. And then we can get into some of the other realities of it. You can't put the game entirely on the refs. You didn't lose the game before because of the rest, even if some of those calls contributed to the failure of this team to succeed and make it to the Super Bowl. The Bengals had chances. It's hard to swallow. It, you don't know, you know, it's all emotion-based today. It's heartbreaking the way that things worked out. All I can do today is follow what I've followed this entire season is Zach Taylor. His lead through the preseason, through the regular season, through the DeMar Hamlin situation as it was unfolding on the field. Zach Taylor is such a good example of what I want to be and when it comes to these situations. And he, as you can see here, did not take the bait and I don't want you guys to either. And this is where your character is going to be tested the most in moments like this, when it's fresh and raw. And, um, you know, you were so close to, to winning an AFC championship back to back, uh, going to the Super Bowl on the road. Uh, there's been a lot of obstacles thrown in front of this team. They've knocked them all down. And um, we just couldn't get past this last one here. And so, again, it's just, um, you know, we got great character and, and we want to represent our team and, and our city the right way. He could have, we've seen him get a little feisty. He could have gone in and he didn't, he chose not to. It's so hard to get to this point as a team and it's such a huge letdown emotionally, of course, and you, everyone saw him on the sidelines. He was going nuts and now they go home empty-handed. He's not headed home to Cincinnati to go to some bar where he's gonna give them the game ball. Um, I don't know. This team's Super Bowl window, 
it, it, this is disappointing what's happening. They have a lot of guys to keep around. They've got a lot of things to happen. And I'll get into it more later this week. This team is one that is set up to go far, to do their thing, to be right where they are this year again next year and go even further. It's still just the beginning. So take your shots today, be upset, drink a beer, do what you need to do, like, you know, just troll people on social media, be mad at me because I don't want to like loathe and bathe in the officiating being the only thing. There are some weird things going on and you have every right to be upset. Brandon Marshall, uh, I think they're telling me, is ready to join the show. So we will be here uh, waiting for him to join. I believe we have Mr. I am athlete media mogul joining us. Don't go anywhere. Let's welcome in a good friend, not Jalen Hurts, though I wish. You know, you know, Brandon Marshall joining us, 13-year NFL pro and good friend of the show. Uh, Brandon, get on in here because you should be smoking a cigar as you picked oh. this team to go uh, this far. Oh, the Eagles. We're talking about the Philadelphia Eagles? When mm -hmm. everybody said that? I like that purple everyone, jumpsuit. Yeah, Fly, fly, Eagles, fly. Everyone said that I was uh, out of my mind for picking the, the the Philadelphia Eagles week three. Off to a hot start, 3-0. and oh. You have Jalen Hurts. Who is this kid? Can we believe the small sample size of five games when, when their guy went down and he stepped in his rookie year? We can't believe that, right? You know? Yeah. Come on, Kay. Who would believe I it? it? Well, I asked this. I asked this morning for the sot of for the, the the clip of you calling it. Do we have it? Ooh. Oh Ooh. no, you said it on our show. They're saying it's on Inside the NFL. Brandon, you said it on our show. The first time you came on our show, you were all in on the Eagles. I remember. Yeah, yeah, I did. But listen, I'll say it again, right? Jalen Hurts. This guy did it in college. He did it in high school. His father is a coach. Mm -hmm. This dude's a true winner. Go back to his rookie year, those five games. It was not a it was not a flaw, right? This dude did it against some of the top defenses. Remember when he did that against the Saints, they were a top five defense. But then other people say, well, there was no Drew Brees on the other side. Come on. This dude's a true, true baller. And then when you look at the this this offense, they can beat you on the ground, they can beat you through the air. Uh, they have dynamic wide receivers. It, it really is an unstoppable offense. It's not the most dynamic. It's not uh, the most uh, electrifying offense. But what it is is efficient. Why? Because if you put eight people in the box, now you have one-on-one -on -one with Devontae Smith and also the Black yeah. Batman and A.J. Brown. So it's one-on-one, -on -one and they're throwing the ball. A lot of times, a lot of teams have this type of makeup. But the coaches are too smart. The coaches make it about their offense and not about their players. If you have dogs on the outside of X and Z, just throw them a go ball, throw them a slant, throw them a hitch route, throw them a nine. What they want to do, they want to do all these whirly twirly routes and they just make it too complicated when you have freak athletes out there that you can just throw the ball up. And then on the defensive side, you know, you know, that off that defensive line, they get after the quarterback and they can also yeah. stop the run when they really want to. And they have great uh, secondary players. So this is a, a team that is unstoppable. Uh, unstoppable, like they can go toe to toe with the Mahomes you saw last night. Granted, they've got the offensive line, they've got the running backs. They're they've been running all over everybody. They did it against the number one defense in the Niners. Like you're saying to the Super Bowl, no problem. Even after what you saw yesterday, which wasn't that impressive. Let's be honest. Y yeah. So you're saying yes, 100 percent. I mean, you know, I I, don't, I just don't see anyone. Per presenting any type of challenges for any of those guys on the field at all at all what's more concerning to you for the super bowl we know the matchup it's set they've got a date in the desert during the rihanna concert hurts shoulder or mahomes ankle what's more concerning for the quarterback I would I would have said uh, Mahomes uh, ankle right. That's why I was high on the Bengals and my freaking parlay, my my three three uh. leg parlay didn't hit because <laughs> <laughs> because the Bengals mm -hmm. didn't cover. Oh, listen, I took the money line there, and uh, you know, and it was because Mahomes. I didn't think that he would be able to be that dynamic. He made big plays. He was a true warrior, and that wasn't a game. There's a lot of athletes that you know will go into a game, you know, banged up and talk it up in the media because they want, you know, the media to say, look at him. He's a true warrior. He's fighting through it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, mm -hmm. A legendary story. 
Uh, but Patrick Mahomes dealing with a high ankle sprain, like that's 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 big time pain right there. And 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 his pain tolerance is through the roof uh, when he's running out to his left and landing on it, you know, on one foot. You know, that's a lot. And uh, he was able to go out there and not only make dynamic plays, but he also threw his body on the line, you know, while he was dealing with that high ankle. So, you know, I would say uh, Patrick Mahomes is the, is the favorite now, right? Because he was able to do that all banged up. It really is. And you look at, I'm looking at that, you know, Eagles game that you want to talk about, uh, how amazing they were. And I mean, their defense is killing it. Their run game. And the defense has 78 sacks this season. That's third most in NFL history. Like, we should get that out. People should be talking about that. That's crazy. 39 rushing touchdowns, the most in NFL history for this year. They're doing that. And then the Niners team, Brock gets hurt. That's awful. It's a 12 game win streak. You know, and it ends them short of a Super Bowl game. And now they got to look to the future. So I don't want to lose, you know, this is probably the last day we can talk about the Niners for a while as we're going to focus on the Super Bowl matchup. Brock Purdy, this is a UCL. This could be career changing, right? Trey Lance, he's coming off an injury next season. Um, what do they do at quarterback next year? Like if Brandon Marshall's calling the shots, are they, mm. I mean, they are a Tom Brady away from winning the Super Bowl. So they have to make the right move. Yeah, no, they stay with Brock Purdy, right? Like, if he comes back healthy and everything's good, and if it's not a, a tear, um, he'll be back in six to eight weeks from what I'm reading. Um, Brock Purdy showed you his value yesterday by not playing. When he's on the field, right, they win, and they win multiple games in a row. When he's not, they get blown out, right? And there was a lot of talk all year. Well, that's the Kyle Shanahan system. Uh, that's the defense. Look at all the p- people he has around him. Absolutely. But if that's the case, then how do they go into a championship game and get blown out when a guy goes down that early in the game? Right. So he showed you his value right there. Um, Is Kyle Shanahan phenomenal? Absolutely. That defense, uh, are they monsters? Absolutely. And do they have uh, some amazing pieces on the offensive side? Absolutely. But this kid was the reason why they were in that position um, and they need him back. He's special. I mean, you might miss all of next year. We don't know with the recovery. So we'll keep our eyes put on that. We have some breaking news to get to, but I want your opinion on. But I, uh, but I, need, to, I need your opinion on this thing that happened uh, last night with 58, right? So the Chiefs, they, they beat the Bengals. Mm. This is another Super Bowl for the Patrick Mahomes era. And then Mahomes on one leg scrambles for the first down. And it, it's, it's so gritty. And, and this obviously happens. And then you've got Jermaine Pratt. I don't know if you saw this and what you hear. Obviously, we see 58. 58 he touches it. Look at, look at, look at this, uh, this bite right. that I want to show you. Hmm. Let me see. Do you guys have the sound bite? You have to call it back. <laughs> What's your so question? That's, <laughs> that's pr- I'm just just would like to know your thoughts about this because I saw your tweet, right? Your tweet said that 58 blew it. But every, you know, right. there's a lot of calls that went a certain way. There's a lot of this. Well, just what are your thoughts on this and with what Pratt said to him? Um, and if you were his teammate, what would you tell him after the game? Well, he said what we all would want to say. I remember Ricky Williams uh, back in the day, 2011, when I was playing for the Miami Dolphins. I was like, Ricky, you think something's wrong with me? And he was like, no, Brandon, you just say what we all want to say and shouldn't say, right? And that's exactly what this kid just did. Every coach, every fan, every player on the field, on the Cincinnati Bengals team, not only wanted to say that, they probably wanted to slap him upside his head uh, but you can't do that, right? And so <laughs> that's all we saw. You know, emotional player um, after one of the biggest moments of his football career, uh, just wearing his emotions on his sleeves. You know, they'll get through this. It was a tough situation. And at the end of the day, he's right. He's 100% right. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, how do you do that? Like, I don't know. What, what did you, even if it wasn't the quarterback, what are you benefiting from that? You know what we call those players, Kay? What? Slow blinkers. 
They're slow. They they do like that. They slow. <laughs> we call those players slow blinkers. Like, come on, you can't, can't make those mistakes. You can't make those mistakes at all. But it wasn't mm -hmm. all on him. So people are putting it all on him. Like he blew it. He didn't blow the game. And I'm very well plugged in with the Spangles fan base, as you know. Jamar Chase was tweeting. He pointed out the 339s on Twitter. The fan base, strong, and obviously the players, they strongly feel that the officiating contributed to the loss. How do you feel about that? Listen, games come down to moments. We say that all the time, right? Oh, well, we lose as a team. No, the reality is there's some players that can lose games. Hell, I dropped game-winning touchdowns before, once before mm. playing against the Patriots, right? But it happens, and we got to be honest with each other. You know, it comes down to three or four moments, and when that moment happened, you got to stand up, and you have to make the play. He didn't make the play, so he definitely contributed to it in a major way. Whether other plays uh, down the stretch, Stretch, absolutely. But that was a big, big play because now you put them in field goal position. You don't know what can happen with, you know, six, seven seconds on the clock. So I, I don't want to hear, uh, you know, that that wasn't a huge play. That's what we're supposed to say as teammates. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as an organization, that's the right thing to do. And if I was in that organization, I would say that. But l internally, no, I would be feeling the same way. Uh, we appreciate your time. Mr. Brandon Marshall, I will see you at Super Bowl. Hopefully we'll be together in the same place, which yes, is always a will. lot of fun. Uh, and the breaking news, I'm just going to tell you on our way out, and we love you for hanging out. Um, Kellen Moore hired as the Chargers offensive coordinator already. He, he was like on the shelf for 20 seconds and brought back into the mix. All right, good thing for lefties in the National Football League. Why not? <laughs>